let's talk petrol and trade in Nigeria. The Nigerian federal government caved in to the demands of organized labor by slashing the pump price of petrol by about 5 naira. By this reduction, the new price of a liter of petrol will be about 162 naira, 44 kobo per liter. The new price template will come into effect from December the 14th. The price slash follows a joint uh, committee meeting of the NNPC and labor representatives who have explored ways of cutting costs on the aspect of the electricity tariff, something they've also been discussing. Both sides have agreed to wait till the next meeting date of January the 25th, 2021, to enable the special committee deal with the complaints to conclude on their deliberations. To trade, Nigeria's Bureau of Statistics has released total foreign trade data for the third quarter of 2020, which saw a rise of 34.1% to 8.4 trillion naira, compared to 6.24 trillion recorded in the second quarter of 2020. Total imports stood at 5.38 trillion in Q3, 33% increase compared to Q2. Total exports came in at 2.9 trillion, a 34.85 increase from the 2.2 trillion recorded in the second quarter of this year. Now, there are some worrying trends in the report, one of which is that Nigeria's trade deficit has increased to 2.4 trillion naira in Q3 from 1.8 trillion in the second quarter. Joining me to discuss these trade numbers and the implications is Wilson Erumebo, Senior Economist at the Nigeria Economic Summit Group, NESG. Good morning to you, Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so trade data, Q3, it rose by 34% to 8.4 trillion. But how much of that breaks down into exports and imports, uh, Wilson? Yeah, so what we have uh, is a case where uh, imports are much higher than you know what we exported. And when you have that situation, you'd have what we, uh, what we call a, a, trade, a negative trade balance. And we, we saw a case where imports account for you know, about 64% total trade. And exports account for you know just the remaining, which is under um, 35 percent. Um, that tells you that um, it, it's worrying to the fact that we've seen a case where uh, what we spend on bringing goods into the country is more than what we earn, and that is not a situation where a country would want to be. Yes, of course, we had the, um, the this is you know out of the impact of the pandemic itself, um, the fact that crude oil had some challenges in the market. But if you look deep into the data, you see some disturbing trends. Um, given the fact that even before COVID, we've had a negative trade balance, especially in the fourth quarter of 2019, since after we implemented the, the border lockdown. And for the four consecutive quarters up till now, we've maintained that negative trade balance. And it's even worsened in the, in the third quarter from the result that we got. Thank you for that. So just you, you mentioned um, uh, exports. I want us to dig deeper into exports. Total exports came in at 2.9 trillion in Q3. Crude oil made up 2.4 trillion of that, about 81% of exports. So what's the takeaway uh, for you? Well, it's even more worrying. The fact that um, we've seen what's happening in the global market. We've seen the fact that um, crude, oil, crude oil has been hardly hit. I mean, it's even one of the uh, most affected um, sectors or areas of the economy, whether in terms of prices and in terms of production. So even with the challenges we've seen in the oil economy at the, in the global space, um, for Nigeria, we're, we're still seeing that crude oil accounts for 81% of what we import. And that in itself tells you um, how weak the domestic uh, productive base of the economy is. And even... Um, more worrying or concerning is the fact that if you um, look at crude oil and other um, oil-related um, products, um, so you have several other products around, whether it's the, the petrochemicals and all that, if you add that together, so you have a case where we're having close to 93% of total trade in oil and other oil-related products, so which means non-oil export just accounts for just um, 7% of what we exported in the last quarter. Very troubling, very worrisome, especially in an economy that, you know, needs foreign exchange badly. Um, there are several examples you can cite of countries that, you know, have been able to take advantage of this pandemic and improve trade, improve production and export. But sadly, we've not done that. Or at least the numbers have not shown that we aren't, we have shown that we aren't doing that. Numbers, Wilson. Uh, regarding non-oil uh, exports, I want to take a look at um, 
our major agri-Greek exports as a percentage of uh, total exports. I want to take a some look at some of these numbers here. Uh, we looked at, I think they had um, sesame seeds um, and some other, some other exports, but they came out to, yeah, there they are. So sesame seeds, whether or not broken, 0.52%, Wilson. Cashew nuts in shells, 0.5%. Fermented Nigeria cocoa beans, 0.2%. Superior quality raw cocoa beans, 0.19. Now, I, you know, we scribbled these numbers on this, um, this slide from the Bureau of Statistics because normally it just tells you major traded agricultural products. It doesn't tell you the percentage of total exports that each of these items amount to. And these are supposed to be major traded agricultural products. Well, what, what do you make of the, of the numbers here? Yeah, so um, what we have here are products, you know, within the agricultural space. And if you look at agriculture as a whole, um, you would see that agriculture, you know, accounts for just 2% of what we exported um, in, in, of total exports in the third quarter. 2% um, is even relatively um, small, especially um, given the fact that agriculture has remained one of the most resilient um, sectors. You know, if you look at growth, it grew by about 1.3, 1.4% in the third quarter. But we're not seeing that numbers translate into um, more exports because even in the local economy, there's still um, quite some demand. And, and more importantly, I must point that um, the border closure, we do a lot of agricultural exports um, through along the border routes and also the border closure is one key um, aspect that keeps you know, reflecting or keeps translating into some of these numbers we're saying. Uh, manufacturing, for instance, we it accounts for just 4.4% of total exports. And that tells you a lot that um, we're still not ready or we've not started, um, we're not ready when it comes to diversifying the economy, when it comes to improving non-oil exports in Nigeria. And I think uh, we should be looking at this sector as one of the key sectors that would lead us out of the current recession we are in, sectors that would even create jobs for millions and millions of Nigerians, sectors that would lead us out of poverty. But um, so one of the approaches um, we've seen over the years and not limited to now is the fact that when there are issues like this, the, the, the next or best response is always to throw money and you come up with intervention funds and programs and all that. But I think we need to move beyond that because Finance is not just the only issue affecting non-oil exporters. There are a whole lot of issues around skills development, issues around value chain development itself in, in bringing in technology, and even issues around access, market, access to markets outside Nigeria. So I think a lot more needs to go on that direction as opposed to always thinking funding or giving loans and all that is will solve key problems in Nigeria. No, it won't. We need to go beyond that. Indeed. Thank you so much for that, Wilson. What, what, what's the impact of a widening trade deficit? Is it more exchange rate pressure? What, what kind of impacts uh, do you see on a widening trade deficit? So, first of all, you would have, you'd keep having pressure on your exchange rate because uh, we don't produce dollar. We don't manufacture dollar here in Nigeria. Dollar is either demanded for supply. And if your imports keep rising, what it means is that you keep demanding um, for dollar to, to pay or to finance those goods are important. So and if imports keep rising and imports is um, larger than exports, it means what you're earning um, from selling your goods to other countries is way low, lower than what you're um, in, getting from importing those goods, what you're paying from importing those goods um, into the country. So um, there's more pressure on the exchange rate itself. Um, we've already, we already know what we're going through when it comes to um, exchange rate. There's more pressure on the reserves because the CBN would have to meet some of these um, dollar needs and, and co. And, and more importantly is the point that um, if you look at um, Nigeria's trade, there's so much potential across so many sectors that you want to think that why are we not getting it right across the sectors, whether it's in the leather industry, whether it's in um, processing of many of these agro um, mm. products and all that. So much potential across that we can, you know, leverage on. Look at to grow the, the, the reserves as well. So I think a lot more in, on, the, on the fiscal side is, is needed to do this. And I'll just say lastly um, on this point that if you look at numbers from, from China, in November uh, of this year, China actually added $50 billion to its reserve. Right. And 
fifty billion dollars, of course, our total reserve is just at thirty-five billion dollars. Gotcha. And that tells you growth in trade was one of the key factors that uh, has to improve. That. Wilson, th thank, yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Wilson Arumabo, Senior Economist at the NESG. Thank you so much for taking us through those trade numbers.